Hi guys, welcome to this video. So few days ago I did a video on how to do an XOS installation 22, uh, 22.05 with their Calamaris installer. But if you saw that, we, uh, saw that video you would have known that I was not that happy with that installation. And later on when I tried to uh, import my config files to that NixOS, it didn't work. It failed because there was some problem with the slash boot partition etc. So there is some problem. Something is uh, messing up with my partitions uh, through the Calamaris installer. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a normal NixOS installation without using the Calamaris installer. And I'm going to import my config files and see if they work. In case they work, then I am actually planning on shifting my main computer from Arch Linux to NixOS. Arch Linux you can also work, always work in them in some virtual machine. So without any further uh, ado, let's get started. So first let me open up virtual machine manager here. So NixOS 22.05. So this is the installation that we did on video using the Calamaris installer. We are going to do a new installation. So let's create a new machine, local install media forward. And then let's browse for the ISO. The ISO must be here somewhere. So this is the ISO. This is the ISO that uh, uses the plasma desktop environment. Choose volume. It says Nixo is stable, but it's not Nixo is unstable. Sorry, unstable. It's not unstable, but it is Nixo is 22.05. Since it's a very recent release, maybe Word Manager has not been updated to that fact. Let's go forward. Let's give it four gigs of RAM. Should be sufficient. Three CPU cores and we will allocate storage separately i'm going to give it uh, 30 gigs of uh, ram because my config file will have a lot of programs i'll try to uh, avoid all those virtualization programs we don't need that but rest of the programs have go are going to be installed so let's give it a more storage just to be safe let's finish it so it will allocate the storage okay it's allocated so this is the storage nixos dash unstable so the name of the storage is nixos that dash unstable no problem about that let's choose that let's go forward now here the name i'm going to give it nixos my config 22.05 and i'm going to customize inf installation because if i'm going to import my configs i want the firmware to be uefi because my configs are based on the uefi firmware so let's finish it Virtual network is not active. Okay, let's start it. Then here in firmware, we will give UEFI, then apply and begin installation. So first we are going to install NixOS. Then what I'm going to do is after the installation is completed, we'll, uh, we'll generate the config. And when generating the config, I'm going to copy my config file, which is in my GitLab and replace it with the default config and then hope that it works. I'm just going to be removing the virtualization stuff that is VirtualBox, Word Manager, LibWord. These things will be enabled. Those things I'm not going to do it inside a virtual machine. So I'm going to disable those things. Remaining everything, I'm going to leave it as it is. And so let's uh, do this thing. If this works out successfully, then I'm going to change my operating system my the operating system that is running on my computer from arch linux to nixos i always like nixos i moved to arch linux to do a particular work but i didn't do that so anyway it's time for me to go back to nixos so i've been spending a lot of time in nixos rather than arch linux especially this year so the plus plasma made by kde the desktop environment it's a heavy desktop environment it's taking a bit of time Okay, so it will open up the Calamaris installer, but I don't need this Calamaris installer. So I'm going to close it and then I'm going to open up a terminal. There is the cursor flickering is going on. That's because the resolution is not set properly. You can see the black bars here on this side and this side. I'm going to set it to my screen resolution. It's 1920 into 1080. So enter. So that should set the uh, resolution properly. Next you have the NixOS manual. So we are going to be following the manual. The thing that we are going to do is actually the NixOS installation was very easy even from the start. It's just you have to do some partition, generate the config file, make some changes in the config file and then build the system. That's it. It's a very easy uh, installation. So let's go here installing NixOS. Let's come down. These are all not that necessary. You can uh, read it if you want. We have to make partitions. So since we are in a UEFI partition, I'm going to make this full screen. I'm going to use the FDisk uh, 
partition tool you can use parted if you are following the nixos manual you can use cf disk i guess but i am going to be using f disk mean i am going to make three partitions one root partition the main partition then two a swap partition and then the third one a uh, very very important it's customary it's not optional it's compulsory if you are in a uefi firmware to create a boot partition so first let's make a uh, let's do f disk dash l you have to give sudo because without sudo you cannot do you cannot log in as root actually if i give as root it will ask the password and it has a password which we don't know so always use uh, sudo in front of all the commands now sudo fdisk dash l we did and we got the name of the disk it slash dev slash vda so sudo fdisk slash dev slash vda we are going to partition this disk so enter it will ask create a new it has already created a new dos disk label but we need a gpt disk label since we are doing a uefi firmware installation so g to get a new gpt disk uh, disk label so created a new gpt disk label the next that we letter we have to give is n for new partition so n partition number by default it's one so it's one anyway enter the first sector always leave it as default then the last sector we give the size of the partition i'm going to give it 500 megabytes this is going to be the efi boot partition so enter it's created partition one of type linux file system it should not be linux file system we are going to change that in just a minute next new partition this is going to be the swap partition so that will be the second partition again leave the first sector as default the last sector just for the sakes of this video i'm going to give it two gigabytes of swap and then finally the last partition the root partition first sector default and last sector is also default because i'm going to allocate the entire remaining storage to this third partition enter now we have to change the file type the partition type of the first one and the second one the first one should be efi system and the second one should be linux swap the third one should be linux file system so no problem about that let's see if we can make this a little bigger yes we can so that you can see it more clearly so now what we are going to do is we are going to do t t is for changing the partition type so enter and partition number is the first partition we want to change the first first partition so one enter and the partition type or alias if you don't know the partition type if you don't know the number for the partition type you can do capital l i already know it it's number one for efi system so change type of partition linux file system to efi system so the first partition has been changed to efi system now again t now the second partition we want it as linux swap the number is 19 so i've been doing these installations for a long time I normally when I do my Arch Linux installations, I use this. I uh, regularly install Arch Linux, other uh, minimal Linux distribution. So I know these numbers. If you don't know it, you can always do capital L. It will give you the list here. So you can see here 19 is Linux swap. Let's quit out of that. Type 19. So it has changed the Linux part file system to Linux swap. Now finally, what we want to do is W. W is to write the changes that we have made and quit out of this. So W to write and quit so now we have made the partition let me clear the screen here next thing what we want to do is we want to uh, format the partitions that we made if you go to the manual here if i come down you, you have to uh, make the formatting you have to do the formatting so the, uh, the they have made the first partition as the root partition it's your wish you can make whichever partition the root partition the boot partition the swap partition it's up to you so the the thing is the root partition should be extend for and for uefi systems which we are using the boot partition should be fat 32 so those are the things that we have to note so now we are going to do the partition so first we will partition the first one first partition which is our efi boot partition so mkfs dot fat space dash capital f space 32 and which partition it slash dev slash vda one because that is the first partition enter unable to do it because permission was denied i didn't give sudo let's give sudo in front of that enter it has made that now the second partition is the swap partition so we have to make swap it so sudo mk swap or make swap which partition slash dev slash vda two over the last partition the big partition should be extend four so mkfs make file system dot extend four ext four space 
name of partition slash dev slash VDA3. So that's it. The partitions have been done. So these are the three commands. This is for the first partition, second partition, sorry, second partition is here and the third partition. So these are the three partitions that we have formatted. Now after formatting, we have to mount the partition. So if you come down here, you have to mount the main partition. So here they have done by disk by label. So we did not give any label. We are just giving the name of the disk. It's much easier instead of creating a label then giving the name of the label. It's all too much work. Okay. So the first partition, the main partition, the that is in our case, the third partition, the root partition has to be mounted on slash MNT and the boot partition should be mounted on slash MNT slash boot. So we have to create a directory slash MNT slash boot and then we have to mount it and the swap partition simply can be turned on by using the swap on command. So now let's do it. So sudo mount the root partition slash dev slash VDA3 the third partition we are going to mount it on slash MNT. It's completed. Next let's do sudo mkdir. So we are going to create make directory slash mnt slash boot we are going to make this directory then we are going to boot the efi partition to this directory so enter the directory has been made and then sudo mount the name of the disk slash dev slash vda one that's the name of the partition then slash mnt slash boot so if you have a separate partition for home then you will do sudo mkdr slash mnt slash home then mount that partition on the home directory it's very simple so enter so we have mounted the first partition and the second partition now let's turn on the swap sudo swap on slash dev slash vda2 so swap has been turned on so we have made the partitions we have formatted the partitions and we have mounted the partitions next what we have to do is let's come down we have to generate the nixos config we have to generate the nixos config by using this command. So let's copy this command and let's type sudo and then paste that. So sudo nixos dash generate dash config dash space dash dash root slash mnt. So it has been generated. Let me clear the screen. So this is the command actually sudo nixos dash generate dash config space dash dash root slash mnt. Let's clear the screen. Now after generating the config we have to edit the config. So we have to edit the config. It's telling us to edit in nano, but I don't like nano that much. We are going to edit the config using vim. Vim will already be present here. So sudo vim, where, what is the location of the configuration? It's slash mnt slash etsy slash nixos slash configuration dot nix. So let's paste that. So this is your location. So this is actually the location the etsy slash nixos configuration dot nix but since we are not in our hard disk we are outside the hard disk we are on the iso we have to give this mnt so when you are uh, after completing your installation your uh, path will be this one so now let's open this uh, file so this is our configuration file now what we are going to do is we are not going to touch anything here we are not going to do anything with this configuration we are going to import my configuration and we are going to see if that works. So how, where can you find my configuration? It's on GitLab. So GitLab and if you give my name, GitLab Jason Samuel, then enter. The first result will always mostly be my GitLab. I have no followers, no, no problems about that. So this NixOS, I have this just for my personal use. If you want, you can use that. That's up to you. And this is my nixos config file so if you go to configuration.nix then this is my config file it's uh, not a huge config file but uh, recently i have been making a lot of changes in that especially for light dmc so many things i can make this a little bit smaller i i'm a little reluctant to do that maybe i will do it and lot of lines have been commented here so see here uh, here these lines they belong to uh, pipe wire so these three lines will enable uh, pulse audio for me if i want pipe wire i will just uncomment these lines then uh, you will get pipe wire it's very simple nixos i like nixos very much so now let's go ahead and con copy this 
okay let's copy it control c then okay first we should have deleted this let's get uh, to the start of this file gg to get to the start of the file in vim then v to get into visual mode then shift g to come to the last so it will select everything let's delete it and then if i give control shift v is it ah yes it's bringing my config file my config file has been copied so first let's go through our config file so imports hardware configuration nix and host dot nix this is the how to you can uh, disable ads system wide on nix os i'll make a separate video about that as of now this file is not present we will uh, add that file after we do the installation now i'm going to remove that, li that line dd to remove a line then let's come down so this is because of the efi partition the system boot everything those things let's come down this line is to allow unfree packages if you want some nvidia things or something some unfree packages there are a lot of unfree packages that we are compelled to use not everything is free and open source software so i mostly try to use open source software but sometimes we are forced to use unfree software so so that we can use that we have to enter this line in our nixos config file then this is my networking host name network manager has been enabled and network manager applet also has been enabled this will sit in the system tray next let me come here time zone then this is relating network uh, db dhcp dhcp has been changed to false because we are using network manager and then these are all commented lines commented lines will not be read as code so we can leave that lines and then this is about the default locale and everything key map etc if you want to change you can change those then x server is enabled and x server x auto lock enabled so what does this x auto lock do if i leave my system for some time it will automatically lock it give some screen saver something like that then down here this is not enable plasma enable simply desktop environment because i'm enabling a lot of desktop environments here you have awesome and uh, window manager qtile open box left wm CWM. So these all will be present as options for you when you enter your login manager. And login managers you have SDDM and LightDM. So SDDM has been commented out here. If you want SDDM, then you can uh, uncomment these three lines and comment these four lines here. So if you want LightDM, you leave this like this and you comment these SDDM lines. So this choices. Just if I want to change it immediately, I don't want to go again to enter all these stuff. Just remove the comments that's all so that's why i have this thing like this next x server us these are all uh, no need already we have done that up you want more changes you can do that then printing service has been enabled then see here sound for sound we have two things so this is also sound this is also sound this is pulse audio this is pipe wire if i want pipe wire i will put uh, hashes before this i will comment these lines and then i will uncomment these lines then it will enable pipe wire if i this is commented and this is uncommented which means i will get pulse audio i tried pipe wire but i got some problems especially when recording uh, sound the pipe wire failed to recognize my microphone so uh, i decided i'll go with pulse audio because pulse audio didn't give any much much problem to me pulse audio has been working fine next these ones are for virtual box and virtual machine manager so we don't need all those things kernel modules let it be it's fine and that too we don't need as of now so i'm going to comment this out because virtualization inside a virtual machine these programs are little huge so i so i don't want them then fish these are my shells fish and zsh bash is installed by default and program fish dot enable enables fish and if i uncomment this line this line then it will make fish my default user sh shell so here i have another line this line makes Uh, zsh my default shell i want uh, fish so i will unco i will unco sorry i will comment that one so that it this line does not get read as a command then we have oh my zsh auto suggestions enabled then gbfs this is for uh, recognizing any usb devices that we are uh, plugging into the uf sorry usb storage devices that we are plugging into my computer then this is for adb so i do a lot of work in my mobile phone as well i root my phone i do so many adb things with that so for that we have adb enabled then these three lines are for flat pack if you want to enable flat pack we will use these three lines then 
this is user so this is for the user jr is a normal user then these are all the groups that this user is a member of you can add different users here in you can add a copy this lines and you can paste it down you can just change the name of the user and you can use it then environment variable so one environment variable this is for making qt5 ct to work qt5 ct doesn't work properly if you don't set the environment variables so we have to enable that that's what these three lines are doing then these are the most important lines these are all the packages that are going to be installed so it's going to be a huge thing here these are all the packages that i install on my regular machine but anyway i'm not going to go and look at everything and i'm going not going to disable everything except word manager because i know that i don't need that one so i'm going to comment that one out then this is for ssh if you want to use ssh then open ssh if you want to enable then this is for firewall then this is the system state version it's 21.11 but the iso that we downloaded is 22.05 so we we have to change this number here so let's do 22.05 i don't know if this is going to work but if this works then it's really great so now what i'm going to do is we have gone through it we have done some small changes here and there colon wq to write and quit then next what we have to do is let's go to the nixos manual let's come down here use this command nixos dash install so sudo nixos dash install so it's copying the channel and if everything goes fine it should build it if the con there are no problems with the configuration file uh, it should build it uh, properly so what i'm going is it's starting to build once so one or two commands uh, start running then mostly there will be no problems then i will meet you after the end of this installation so it started so fine let it build it will take some time because of the huge number of programs that are going to be installed so let it do its work i'll meet you after this process gets completed okay so the installation has completed it has built everything now it's asking for a password this is going to be a root password enter again your root password so now the installation has been finished now we have we can reboot so there were no errors so this is really good so i am go definitely going to be switching from arch linux to nix os today after i complete this video i'll upload this video from arch linux and then i'm going to be on nix os so that's why nix os is fantastic now this took me around to 20 minutes so i'm explaining everything so it took that much time otherwise this process will be around same time 15 to 20 minutes it will be completed just think that whatever uh, app applications that you have uh, need installed they all will be installed just by copying your configuration file this cannot be done in other operating system it can be done in arch linux but you have to write a script for that it's too much work so nix os makes things very very easy that's why i like nix os it's my favorite linux distribution so I told you i moved to arch linux to experiment with some things anyway i didn't do those things so i'm back on nix os so it's uh, starting so the first time it has to start some things because this is a huge installation actually not a very minimal installation where you just have the default config and go with it it will start very easily very fastly if you do that but since we had so many things so many application so many services flat pack pulse audio so many things unwanted things not unwanted things but those things we will need when we are using a computer as our personal hardware so i don't know when this is going to complete let's wait for that okay it didn't take much time okay so this is light dm i had a background image set up but that uh, background image is not found in the root folder as of now i didn't copy it we couldn't copy it only after we go inside we can copy that this is uh, vimix dodder theme i think i don't remember the name of the theme 
now if i give the password here it will not go because we did not set a password for our user so what you have to do is you have to go to other login as root give your root password then open up a terminal here then use the command password p a s s w d and give the name of the user it's very very small it's opening in uh, x term i cannot make this uh, uh, zoom in also so i hope you can see that the command is nothing but password let's see if alacrity is we installed alacrity it should be present yes it is present let's do this in alacrity so in alacrity you can zoom in so the command is password jr remember you are inside your root account now password jr will create the password for that particular user let's give the password retype it password updated successfully now windows shift q to log uh, get out of it now if you give that password you can login so let's again open up uh, if i give windows enter it's opening up x term okay let's open alacrity let's uh, fix the resolution first okay that's it now what i have to do is i have to go to my gitlab grab my uh, config files dot files and everything and paste it i already made a video that's just a 2 minutes or 3 minutes video and i'll be back in business with all the software that have been installed so you can see all the software these have been installed so i don't know if you can see it it's on the top so all these software i don't have to go again and install all those things i don't have to remember things what software i need whatever i need is already here it's really really good that's that's it for this video i'll meet you next time from my nixos computer thank you have a nice day